Mike Bunn is possibly Ireland's best known fashion photographer. Mike grew up and was educated in London, England. His first introduction to photography was as a small child. He would sit at the bottom of the stairs where there was a beautifully carved chest from Burma. Inside this chest was a veritable magic carpet ride to Africa, his mother's photographs of life in British East Africa. Photography was ingrained in Mike's blood. I came on a trip to Ireland the day I arrived here. Um, I just felt like the dog that jumped over the wall. I just didn't want to go back. I started pining for, for Ireland when I went back to Chelsea. And eventually I came to live here and uh, started taking photographs. I could, you know, it was just, just, it was just an open palette. Want to get the castle in? It has yeah. been said of Mike Bunn yeah. that he yeah, could find good. beauty in a toad. Mike Bunn is not capable of taking a shot that isn't beautiful. He sees beauty in the most extraordinary things. And that is easy to see by the magical work he creates. The phone didn't stop ringing from then on for me to take fashion pictures. And I suddenly realized that for me, um, whether it's photographing a woman or a fella as a model, or, or for that matter, a landscape or a food shop, it was all the same. I was suddenly realizing that the fashion had made me a better photographer because I was now learning in my studio a discipline which I had control of, which I could then go out and use in the field. And it's excited me, and all these years later, I'm more excited about photography than I've ever been. All these slate greys here, look, it's lovely, isn't it? The one thing with photography that I've always found a bit disturbing, it's not really tactile. Like, a painter looks and understands light and uses it on a palette with his hands. A sculptor does it. But with photography, we, we, we have the light, we understand it, and we then take a picture using the light, but we're not actually touching anything. I've always found that rather frustrating. That's probably the most tactile photography's ever been because you, 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 it was hands-on, you were touching paper, you were touching chemicals and mixing them. And now we come into the digital age, it's very exciting, but it's got more divorced from being tactile. When I first started using digital, I was so conscious of it that uh, I used to use the, 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 the tags that you took off the the rolls of film like Tri-X or, or Ektachrome and I'd stick them on the back of the viewfinder so people thought I was shooting film you know, so they wouldn't bother to look at the picture and every now and again I'd hide and go have a lift the flap up and have a quick look and off we go again you know. <laughs> uh, it's the age of digital uh, imagery um, and I think you have to really balance the two together I think if you put the two in bed together you can really get some exciting results the, the young kids must realize that you have to go back to the classics. You've got to, to, to understand and embrace something that was very, very beautiful. So having said that, I've come through all that. So when I now use like digital cameras and things, uh, I put the two in bed together and I can't let my classical training go. Mike Bunn's classical training has made him one of Ireland's most sought after photographers. With notable clients like top Irish designer Louise Kennedy and major brands from Fortune 500 companies, it is easy to see why these clients continue to come back to Mike for their next campaign. Mike treats each shot as if it were an epic film, which is evident in his work. Perhaps it was his mother's early influence and those exotic images of her travels to Africa. Either way, there seems to be a fairy tale story told in each of his images. Okay. This is what we're doing. Karen? The people going in the boat is Frank, me, Costello, myself. We had an idea we were going to do maybe a shot of the sun coming around the castle, the boat shot um, with Karen at first light because the sun does normally come up round there. But all hell broke loose because the minute we wanted to do it at seven o'clock, we all rendezvoused at the boathouse opposite the hotel and um, it started to rain. And then out came the umbrellas, so we thought, oh my God, you know. Now remember the boat, what you want to get in is the boat's going to be the top, the boat's going to swing with you there, but you want the boat over here, right? What we don't want to see in this video, we want to see this. I'll tell you if you drop that anchor now, we'll be okay, don't you see? Drop the anchor now. 
By the time we'd got the boats in position, it had stopped raining, and we had this wonderful soft light. We didn't have sun. And in a way, it's better, because if we'd had sun, it would have been too backlit. But it was that lovely, flat, mercurial lighting, and the water was absolutely flat calm. When you're working from scratch, you, you, you have an idea. You don't actually have a, a brief brief, because no one really knew what it was like. I, for, I had a book on Ashford Castle, which we, we had a little preview at, which we, it, it helped us do a bit of scouting. We knew that we could do this, we could do that. We knew where the light came in the morning. Well, the idea was to just, obviously to try and get an establishing shot of the castle and we wanted uh, Karen to be in a boat um, with the castle in the background. But I think when you have a, sh a shoot like this, I think we've managed to do it in such a way that um, it could relate into a story of five stories, no specific plot. Leave marble stones there as black as ink. Such a rather nice light in this, isn't it? With gold and silver, I will transform. We were trying to get the feeling that. Uh, yeah, sorry, yeah. Karen is a very, very beautiful girl, very lovely Irish girl, who has quite an Italian and quite a nostalgic look about her, uh, that she felt comfortable. This was her environment, whether it was at the boatyard, whether it was standing in a passageway in the hotel, or whether she was in the grounds. I think it was to try and make it look as though she was part of the environment without overtaking it and it overtaking her. And I think we managed to do that. My days are yeah. over. Straighten up a bit now, Robert. And lay me down. I wish I was in caring for us. Only for now. I, th I think between the different shots we've taken, there's a good balance, you know. And